Okay, let's revisit reflexes. Now that we know a little bit about muscle structure, let's see how these actually are working. So if we look at this picture, what we're what we're seeing here, this is a bone, a tendon, and a muscle. All right, so the muscle is connected to the bone via this tendon. The muscle has a nerve that innervates it, and we're just going to zoom in on that region right there, the, the nerve ending, um, and how it interfaces with the muscle. So what we can see over here in the blown up picture, what we can see is this muscle fiber that I am hovering over right now, this muscle fiber has a nerve um, shown in orange, and this nerve has a lot of sort of, it's almost like fingers that wrap around the muscle fiber. Okay, so that right there, um, that is a connection that allows a reflex to be initiated. When this muscle fiber gets stretched, uh, this nerve will be stimulated, so that's a sensory nerve, and that signal will get carried into the spinal cord to an interneuron, and then that's going to end up activating a motor neuron. So this is a quick reflex. This doesn't involve the brain. It's a reflex that can um, be initiated just through, through the action of what's in the spinal cord itself. So it's very, reflexes are very quick for that reason. There's another type of nerve uh, shown as well in yellow. And this one has, these are actually called flower sprays at the end, not kidding, uh, flower spray endings. And these nerves are specialized for detecting sustained stretches. Um, so in orange, this is more for just quick stretches. Oh, my, my muscle is being stretched. Maybe I need to change my, quick, correct my posture very quickly. Um, in yellow, these flower spray nerve endings, these detect more sustained stretches, right? So like after you exercise, when you intentionally stretch, um, that's the, the sensory, feeling that we're getting is from those neurons. So let's revisit the knee-jerk reaction. All right, here's the hammer. And when we use the hammer on the tendon right below the knee, what's happening is this whole section, right? This whole section, it's all connected. It's one piece. This tendon connects um, up to this muscle ultimately. And so when we use the hammer, this muscle is actually being stretched just a little bit. When that happens, the sensory neuron sends a signal into the spinal cord, and then a motor neuron sends a signal back to the muscle and tells it to contract. Okay, and then we see as a result of that, if this shortens, um, that's gonna pull the rest of the leg upwards a little bit, and that's the knee jerk that we see. Let's look at a couple of other reflexes that we have as well. That's the very familiar one. Um, next up, we have one that's probably not quite as familiar. We have what are called Golgi tendon organs. These are uh, little reflex sensors that are embedded in our tendons. Okay, so not only do we have reflexes um, initiated due to, due to muscles being stretched, but we also have reflexes um, due to stretch in the tendons. So this one, this one is interesting. Um, the Golgi tendon organs, so they are located, again, at the tendon, and when these are stretched, something very specific happens. If your tendon is being stretched, um, what we don't want to have happen is for that tendon to tear. We don't want a, a rip. That would be very bad. It takes a long time to heal. So what the body does, if the tendon is being stretched, it will actually send a signal through neurons, it will send a signal that will inhibit the muscle. So in this case, the muscle is not going to contract, rather it's intentionally not going to contract, right? Because what would happen if it did contract? If it contracted, that's gonna put even more strain on this tendon and be more likely to cause a tear. So this is a different type of reflex. It's an inhibitory reflex. Okay, uh, let's see here. We also have, wrapping up our reflexes, um, we have, with, with the nervous system, we have what's called reciprocal innervation. And this comes back to the idea of having um, antagonistic pairs of muscles. So I think I used the example of the, the biceps and the triceps. They're an antagonistic pair. They, they cause us to do opposite motions. Um, so with regards to reflexes, Okay, let's just follow through what's happening here. If we, if we activate a muscle stretch receptor, okay, so activate a spindle apparatus, that will send a signal to the spinal cord, 
And um, what's going to happen, we've already seen this, the muscle will be activated to contract and you know, to maintain posture or, or do whatever. Um, but at the same time, the antagonistic muscle is going to be inhibited. Okay, so the reflex, uh, it's sort of like a, it, the body wants it to be a one-way correction, not a two-way sort of, sort of reaction. Um, so reciprocal innervation, the fact that neurons innervate antagonistic muscles, okay, one of those muscles can be activated, the other one can be inhibited. This is something that allows reflexes to work really well and not get like confused with each other. When you, um, I think our, our textbook goes into a little bit more detail on this. There's also something called double reciprocal innervation, and this has to do with uh, dealing with the two sides of the body. So if you, for example, if you step on something sharp on the floor, Legos, uh, if you step on something sharp, your reaction is to pull up your foot, right? Because you want to get off of the sharp thing that you stepped on. At the same time, your other foot needs to go down to the ground quickly in order to support your weight. So we've got a different type of a reflex going on on the two sides of the body. And this is all um, possible due to the way that the neurons are mapped onto antagonistic muscle pairs. So the name of that was double reciprocal innervation. Um, it's two reciprocal innervations involved at the same time.